So let's talk about a really important but oftentimes neglected part of the whole iceberg story, and that's the whole story of Apache iceberg catalogs. They play a very large role. And we'll talk about a special catalog called Nessie, but we'll get to there. First, let's just talk about the mechanism of a catalog. Now, in Iceberg, the catalog mechanism really has one, one primary job, to allow whatever tool that's looking to interact with an Apache Iceberg table to know what is the current metadata file. Because again, every time the table changes, every time a new data is written, data is deleted, a new, any of the schema changes or structural changes to the table, always results in a new metadata file being written. So generally these metadata files have version numbers. Simplest could be just be like a V1, V2, V3, V4. Sometimes they're given like a timestamp in the name. So it'd be like the timestamp.metadata.json. But whatever the naming convention is, the engine, so this can be Dremio and other tools, won't necessarily know which one is the one to look at for the current version of the table. Okay, at least to be able to do it in a fast way, because yes, theoretically, they could go like look through every file and see, hey, which one was the most created most recently, or has the right name, but that requires them to do file listing operations, which would slow down the query. So the idea is like, how can I skip that and know which is the right file to read? So the catalog acts as that mechanism by saying, hey, table one, this is the current metadata file for table one, table two, table three, etc. So I can go request, say, hey, I'm looking to do work with table two, and it'll tell me where to go. Now, there's a couple different ways this catalog mechanism can work. There is basically two categories. There's a file system catalog, oftentimes referred to as the Hadoop catalog, although that's a, the name is misleading because it can work on other file storage systems other than just Hadoop. It just means that instead of actually having a service that tracks the different tables, you're just gonna use the file system. So basically you're laying out tables sort of like in that traditional hive way where this folder is table one, this folder is table two. And then what's gonna happen is that every folder is gonna have two subfolders, a data folder with all your parquet and data files and a metadata folder with all the metadata files, the manifest lists, the manifests, the metadata.jsons. But if you if the file is using, or if the particular table is using this file system catalog, they'll also find another file in that folder called version hint.txt. Now inside this version hint.txt will be then the name of the current metadata file. So even though this particular folder has a v1, a v2, and a v3 metadata.json, an engine like Dremio would know, oh, I need the v3 one because it can open up that version hint.txt and see that v3 is the current metadata file and then construct the table from there. Now this is generally fine for like simple usages of Apache Iceberg, generally not recommended for production. The reason being is that not all file systems are created equal. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that every time the table changes, at the end of that change, that version hint.txt file has to be updated. So you're not creating a new version hint.txt, you're updating it. So this can create an issue if you have multiple people changing the table at the same time, because not all storage systems have the same guarantees when you were to swap or update a file of the same name. Okay, so particularly I think like in S3, there's, there's, there's some issue with guarantees at this level. So in that case, if you have two people changing and updating that file at the same time, there's a chance that it might reflect the wrong transaction or the wrong sort of new state of the table. Um, so that would be the thing uh, to be concerned with when using the file system or Hadoop catalog if you have multiple writers, multiple people writing to the table at the same time. Otherwise, it works fine. If you're using certain file storage systems like Hadoop, then that concern is not there either because there you would have those guarantees. Um, but just, you know, typically what's more recommended is to have some sort of service catalog. So in a service catalog, the idea is that you actually have a server. So you, it's not just relying on the where the, the data is stored, you actually have a third party service or server running. And every time the table is requested or change, the tool interacts with this server. So they're not interacting with the underlying storage system where everything is stored, but with the server. And the server usually will have like a backing store, which could be some sort of database of some sort, where it'll list, hey, these are the tables I have and these are their current references. And because the database does have locking mechanisms, which prevent multiple writes from happening at the same time, 
you're generally going to have those guarantees where if multiple people are trying to update the table at the same time, you're not going to end up with inconsistent data. Now, there are several different libraries built into Iceberg uh, or certain catalog libraries built into Iceberg. So things like using Hive, which is the Met uh, Hive Metastore, which is the catalog for Hive tables. You can use that as a catalog for your Iceberg tables. Nessie, which I'll get more into in a little bit. There's JDBC, which allows you to just use a database directly as a catalog. And then there's the REST catalog, which is unique. But let's to really appreciate REST catalog. Well, before there was a REST catalog, what would happen is that when you wrote the library for Hive to be used as a catalog or Nessie to be used as a catalog or JDBC to be used as a catalog, you have to write that library for each language. Okay, so there's four, right now, four languages in which Iceberg is being implemented. Java, Python, Rust, and Go. Okay, the Python libraries can't talk to the Java libraries. The Rust libraries can't talk to the Java libraries. So in that case, not only do you have to rewrite all the readers and writers for Iceberg, the core API, but then you'd also have to write all the client libraries for the catalogs. So the Hive Nessie would have to be written, Hive and Nessie would have to be written four times, once in Java, once in Python, once in Rust, once in Go. And this kind of creates a support issue, right? Because you might be using a Rust-based tool, but using a Hive catalog, but if they haven't implemented a Hive catalog library in Rust, well, then you can't use that catalog in Rust. So to kind of eliminate this problem, they created a standard REST specification. So instead of interacting via a custom catalog, you have a standard REST API for a standard set of HTTP calls that get made. So now that client, so basically there's a Java version of the REST client, a Python version of the REST catalog, and eventually ones for Rust and Go. But the beauty of it is, it, what is the server on the other side could be anything. So now Nessie supports REST catalog. So in that case, that server, when you're using REST catalog, could be a Nessie server. Okay, it could be other types of servers like Polaris, Gravitino, Unity, are all things that support that REST catalog standard. So the idea is that instead of every catalog having to build their own library in every language, the REST catalog says, hey, if the catalog can just follow the standard protocol, then they don't have to do that. They'll just work everywhere catalogs work because the REST catalog ends up being sort of the standard way of communicating. Okay, and that's pretty cool. Okay, it makes it much easier for there to be a variety of catalogs that offer different sort of value benefits but without all the complexities of figuring out, hey, what tools work with what catalogs. So that's sort of the story with REST catalog. But Nessie is a very particular special catalog when it comes to the iceberg world, because while most catalogs will track table A points to this reference over here, Nessie does something different. In the same way that an iceberg table tracks the different changes to the table, and you can actually see those historical changes and time travel the individual table, Nessie tracks the changes to the catalog. So when basically when table two changes, Nessie has a histor historical record of the previous references, which means you can time travel the catalog. So let's say you're querying three tables, instead of having to do time traveling to each table individually, you could just say, hey, I want to query these tables as the, at this, I'm going to set the catalog to this point, and I'm going to query all the tables as they were at that point in time. So it allows you to have sort of multi-table semantics, which we'll get more in detail uh, later on as we get hands-on with Nessie. But basically, this enables things like multi-table transactions, uh, enables uh, creating zero-copy environments, uh, isolating ingestion, all sorts of really cool things that you can't, you couldn't do otherwise because it provides a sort of Git for data-like experience where you can create a branch and say, hey, let's have a branching history of our changes to the, to the catalog, uh, and then you can merge those changes back in, just like Git. So if you ever use a Git for working with code, it provides you this kind of extra bonus features, which you don't have to use. You could just use it as a straight-up catalog, but you do get the bonus features and because it supports the REST catalog interface, you do get the reach of the REST catalog interface. And you can learn more about Project Nessie at projectnessie.org. This will be the catalog we'll be using for our hands-on exercises, which we'll be getting to very soon. I'll see you soon.